two minute rule states that if it can be done in under two minutes, do it right now. If it's a job that needs five to 10 minutes, you might have to be sitting down for it. So you might have to give yourself some time to do it. And that means that all of these smaller jobs are done so that you can enact all of the bigger ones. And for me, those bigger ones are writing webinars. I'm delivering a lot of webinars at the moment. So I'm writing a lot of talks and talks take a long time. Um, They take me a day at least to nut it out and then I go back and I go back again and I change it and I look at it again and I adjust it and so you know it's not a slow thing so I need time and I need to be able to sit down and focus on it and to be able to focus I need to not have the other little jobs hanging over me now have I done the emails have I checked my messages have I done all of those things I need to know that I've got allocated times in which to do that Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How are you today? So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. One of them is the two-minute rule, and the other one is our functional mindset, uh, how we perceive and do. So we'll start with the two-minute rule, shall we? So I procrastinate, or at least I think I do. And I read an article recently about the two minute rule and realized that I don't procrastinate as much as I thought I did. In actual fact, I use the two minute rule and I have been doing so all of my life. So I started out, my sister actually started this with me in that when we went to the bring the washing in off the line of course it always just gets thrown into the basket and my sister my older sister turned around and said if we fold them we don't have to do it when we get in the house so there's a logic isn't it it's going to take me two minutes at the line or maybe five minutes extra to fold them at the line but if I dump them all in the basket bring them all in then I have to start the process again later So all of these little things. So my mother always wanted us to make the beds, make our beds in the morning. And I always make my bed in the morning. Now, I know my son now does. He's in the Air Force. But my daughter certainly hasn't got that habit going yet. But these little habits that we can do, these little fix-up things, means that we don't have to, at the end of the day, ignore it, be overwhelmed by it, or set a timer to see if we can get it all done. What we've done is made sure that everything is sorted before we do anything else. So in the morning I go for a walk or I do Pilates or I go to a clubs class in the morning. After that I come back and I do those little jobs. So at the moment while we're talking my dishwasher is on. We've just had the neighbor's dog on the front veranda so I've just done some yelling um, to make him go away and leave my cat alone. I've just looked after the cat so that was out of the ordinary but I've made my cups of tea I've made my drink bottle for the day my bed is made there's lots of things have been done and they haven't taken that long so that I could start podcasting so that I can start batching I batch about three or four podcasts at a time and I like to be able to do I like to get a minimum of four out if I can so I've I'm batching right now and I'm thinking about you know, what I can share with you. And this two minute rule is one of those things that I think if we keep telling ourselves we're procrastinating, then we will do it more because we do what we tell ourselves to do. And that's the mindset part of today's conversation. So I know that I spend my mornings doing and undertaking the two minute rule rather than saying to myself now I'm procrastinating. I now say to myself, oh, two minute rule, two minute rule, two minute rule. So I'm getting those things out of the way before I start. The other part of that two minute rule is my emails. I sit down and I go through the emails. I delete a ton of them. I'm on everybody's mailing list. So every so often, and I, you can unsubscribe obviously to all of these things, but I often don't. Often I'll leave them because I do like that person. And every so often I will want to dip in to what they've got to say. So a lot of them are there, but depending how busy I am, I will or won't dip in. So there's a lot of deleting and there's a lot of saving for later. 
So I always wake up to at least 30 emails. I delete 15 to 20 of them. I have to respond immediately to maybe five or seven of them. And the other couple I will leave until, you know, until I want to read them. The responses are saved sometimes, so I won't open an email that I feel needs to be responded to within working hours. So I will respond to that one later. I'll I'll see it's from someone. I think, well, they're not going to be at work at the moment. I'm not going to respond to that one until I do my email round again at 11 a.m. So I have the times when I'm going to do things and when I'm going to look at things. Now, that can't happen every day. On a Monday, I have my next level group and we talk about their cases and we nut out what's going on in their businesses and their cases. And we work as a group to support each other. It's a QA and a style, hot seat style um, group on a Monday. And so I know I'm going into that today at 11.30 a.m. So there's not actually going to be time for me to go back to those emails. They're just going to sit there until this afternoon when the second opportunity, which is about three o'clock, when I look at emails again. Here I was going, oh, I'm a procrastinator, I'm a procrastinator. Now I'm saying to myself, two minute rule, two minute rule, two minute rule. I'm feeling so much better on this mindset change. The other mindset change, and this is something that I teach the parents of the children that I work with, and this is part was part of my pediatric training. We never say don't, okay? If you say don't, and this is what I tell the parents of the children, you know, is if you say don't, that child hadn't thought about that until you say don't. So if you say don't step on the road while they're on that you know, they're standing wobbling on the edge there on that bit of concrete. They hadn't thought about the road. They were, they were trying to balance on the curb. So if you say don't go on the road, suddenly the road becomes a thing. Oh, oh and they will fall onto the road. They will fall forward onto the road. And, and their mum goes, oh, I can't believe you did that. I just told you not to go on the road. Whereas what we'd said was stay on the footpath. Then they know where they're meant to be. They've visualized where they're meant to be. It's like a downhill skier. You know, you watch them in and out of those trees. Amazing. We don't have snow in Adelaide. So, you know, when I see them and they're like, wow, 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 in and out of the trees. Now, what they're not thinking is don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, because then they'd concentrate on the tree. What they're looking at is the person in front of them. There's an obstacle. Go left, go right, go left, stay on the path. Go left, go right, go left, stay on the path. They're telling themselves where they want to be and what they want to do. And we need to remember those things for ourselves and reenact those things in our own brains. So the two-minute rule. So I've changed the wording from I'm procrastinating, I'm not doing anything, to I'm enacting the two-minute rule. And the two-minute rule states that if it can be done in under two minutes, do it right now. If it's a job that needs five to ten minutes, you might have to be sitting down for it, so you might have to give yourself some time to do it. And that means that all of these smaller jobs are done so that you can enact all of the bigger ones. And for me, those bigger ones are writing webinars. I'm delivering a lot of webinars at the moment, um, and I'm delivering at a lot of conferences. So I delivered at the um, Naturopaths and Herbalists Association Conference of Australia conference up in on the Gold Coast. Recently, I'll be presenting for the NZAMH, which is the New Zealand Association of Medical Herbalists. I'll be presenting for them physically in September, but in the meantime, I'm presenting for the Herbalist Association of New Zealand, a different conference provider, in September online. I'm, I'm delivering for ProHerb coming up, a New Zealand um, distributor. I'm delivering for HTMA, so interclinical. I'm delivering for them into their groups over the next few weeks. I've got, and I'm going to Perth. Oh, by the time you listen to this, I will have just been to Perth to the Rainier um, Expo and delivered there. So I'm writing a lot of talks and talks take a long time. Um, they take me a day at least to nut it out and then I go back and I go back again and I change it and I look at it again and I adjust it and so you know it's not a slow thing so I need time and I need to be able to sit down and focus on it and to be able to focus I need to not have the other little jobs hanging over me that have I done the emails have I checked my messages have I done all of those things I need to know that I've got allocated times in which to do that And I'm not really um, a brilliantly organized person. I'll be honest, 
I'm untidy. I do have an untidy desk, although at the moment it's actually not looking that bad. There is, as always, a pile of books and papers that I'm due to read, but they will be allocated that time. So what I've decided to do with that big pile of papers and um, journals and information, you know, company information and flyers and um, all sorts of things are in that pile, to be honest. So what have I decided to do? I've decided to give myself five minutes a day. So I've gone through the pile and I've ditched a load of stuff because it turns out lots of them were double ups so I've ditched a load of stuff that were double ups and so that's reduced the pile massively I've then separated the pile into two piles while I was doing that and one of them is a pile of journals um, association magazines as well as trade journals so they're in one pile um, and in another pile are all the random pieces of paper. And of course, lots of that was ditched as I was going through. So, you know, there's information on, um, the, I remember there's one big one on NAC and acetylcysteine. There's information in there on um, liposomals and the change, you know, and worrying about liposomals and how they're made and where they're contaminated, all of those sorts of things. So there's lots of things I really want to read. But they're in another pile. And that, and then I've decided that is the pile I'm going to work on first, journal second, and then one journal at a time. So by actually planning out, so I've separated all of these jobs at like that one particular job I've actually separated out. I guess that's three things isn't, that I did with it. I chucked out and I separated it out into two piles. With other jobs, there needs to be that time limit or that time ability or that time knowledge, whatever it is. I'm going to be writing a talk. I'm going to sit down and do it from, you know, I'm going to sit with my lunch to start with and I'm going to plan it. And when I plan that, like you plan a workshop or you plan a talk or you plan whatever it is you have to do, you need to decide how am I going to nut this down? So especially if it's something you're putting off. How am I going to nut this down into the easiest parts first? So the easiest part for me first is to, one, sit down. And number two, I nut it all out by creating a roadmap for the talk. So you'll start to see more and more that my talks start with this. This is a roadmap of what we're going through today. This is where we're starting. This is what I want you to achieve. And this is the end point of this talk. And that gives me then a structure by which to work because I've used literally a roadmap rather than just I was just saying at the beginning today we're going to cover this, this and this and then I would do it from there. Now I'm putting in these roadmaps into a lot of them and that's really helping me to structure the talk to take the time so that I know where I'm going, I know how many parts of the talk I have and how to separate it out so that I can cover each area as I get to it. And then if I've put in too many parts I remove something from that roadmap that's right at the beginning. I reduce it in some way. I change it. But it means that I have a structure to work from. And within that structure, I can spend time. I can spend X amount of time on each part. I can start. I've done this part now. I can go and do something else and come back to this. I can take a brain break. It does mean that I concentrate more deeply on what I'm doing without getting sidetracked because I've got rid of my two minute jobs because I've changed my mindset to rather than the don't or I have to do this or I'm procrastinating mindset. I've moved it just like I tell the parents of the children who see me. I've removed the don't. I've turned it to a do and also speaking it out loud. So in the car, um, was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember actually. I was in the car and I was driving and I was listening to a conversation on the radio and it made me feel quite sad. It made me, um, it sparked something in me, something vulnerable in me as I was listening to this story. And it made me think. And so I, I thought, right, I've actually got a lot still to do today. Um, I don't want to be worrying or worrying about this when it really has nothing to do with me, but it has kicked off my emotions in some way or another. So I changed the radio station so that it was pop music. So it was a bit more upbeat. And I said it out loud. I am worthy. I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm here and I know where I'm going. And I made some other affirmations. You know, I affirmed to myself out loud. And that just changed the feel for me in that car. It uplifted me and it made me say, yes, moving forward with this. I'm not brought down by whatever it was that was triggered 
um, in that story. So, you know, a couple of things for today. Two minute rule. It also means, of course, that all of those um, workshops you've bought in the past, all of that study that you want to do, because you enact the two minute rule, you can then say this afternoon at X time, I'll have one hour in which to watch that webinar from Geraldine's Graduate Mastery Program that I paid for, that I really want to learn in, that I want to do. I just thought I'd snick that in there. Um, <laughs> but you see what I mean? By taking these little component things and getting those little things out the way gives us the big time to do something. And my last little tip from today is the 54321 rule. If you don't want to do something, so you've done everything and you've discovered yourself cleaning the fridge, that's always my, oh my goodness, I really am avoiding. I'm cleaning the fridge now. So if you discover yourself doing the one thing that always means to you you're avoiding, then once you've spotted it, say to yourself, I'm avoiding now. What am I avoiding and why am I avoiding it? Oh, I'm avoiding writing that talk or I'm avoiding paying that bill. I'm avoiding um, going onto my website and adding my blog. I'm avoiding, what is it I'm avoiding? And acknowledge the avoidance. Again, do it out loud. If you're cleaning the fridge, you can talk into the fridge and no one will hear you. So acknowledge what you're avoiding. So I'm avoiding writing that talk. I will go and do I'm going to dry my hands, put down this cloth, dry my hands, and I'm going to go and write the talk. So you head to your office and you say, mm, that's when you implement the 54321 rule. And it's just as simple as that. You just go, okay, 54321, off I go, sit down and do it. And it's, I think it's something from our childhood, you know, and being in a race, you know, it's like one, two, three, go. Rather than one, two, three, go, you could run away. It's 54321. I start now. So those are my top tips for today to help you to implement and to achieve and be where you want to be and do what you want to do. And if you're still here at the end, then I'm assuming you've enjoyed it. So please make sure that you go and give me a review. I would love that. And then with that review, if you wouldn't mind sharing it and tagging me and go into the draw for a one-on-one -on -one with me. I think that would be the way to go, don't you? So have an absolutely brilliant rest of day and I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the Herbal Discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.